invitations from the president to fly on Air Force One. Our next guest is one of those invite. He got one of those invites and actually turned it down. Ohio Congressman John Bocheri. He joins me this morning from Washington. Congressman, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you, Karen. So as we said, uh, you're pretty popular these days in the halls of Congress. You voted against health care reform, uh, the one that was passed by the House in the fall. And since then, you've been heavily courted, of course, by the White House. First of all, so you got an invite to go on Air Force One and also to join the president at the rally, uh, to, at a rally on health care, and you said no. Why? Well, it was very difficult for this Air Force pilot to turn down a ride on Air Force One. But at the end of the day, we had a jobs announcement in our district. $16 million are being awarded to expand a runway in my district, and uh, I had to be there and, and then get on the road at least two hours earlier. So read nothing into it. You know, the president uh, had to stand on the national stage that day and talk about uh, health care reform and our balance that we move towards it here in the, in the Congress. Right. But, I mean, you have been uh, facing pressure as, as well as other Democrats who have, are not sold on this yet. Um, I, I know yesterday we talked to one who's waiting out of Pennsylvania who's waiting for um, the CBO numbers to come out and see what's going on. But what will it take for you to vote yes on uh, the House version of this. Well, I agree that we need to have reform. We need our nation needs to have this debate, but we need to do it in a way that doesn't explode the deficits, that has cost containment, reduces costs over the long term, but goes after fraud, waste, and abuse. I'm encouraged by the Senate version because it reduces the budget deficit by 132 billion dollars over 10 years and over a trillion dollars in the second 10 years. I'm encouraged by that, but. It needs to have changes. The Senate version, there's no way Ohio should have to pay for Nebraska, and I want those deals out. It, uh, it looks like that is going to be out, though, right? The, cor the so-called corn husker kickback? That's correct, and we're waiting for the final version of the bill. We want to look at the numbers, make sure that they're in line with what we believe, and and uh, and, and move from that point. Uh, one of the one of the uh, obvious uh, considerations has to be what's good for your own district, and I know that uh, Henry Waxman has been putting out sort of uh, some emails just to explain to individual congressmen what they can say to people in their district. And for you, the largest employer is a hospital, and according to this memo that was put out by Congressman Waxman, basically you guys would stand to benefit. He says that you're the health care bill would actually reduce the cost of uncompensated health care, uh, uh, uncompensated costs for health care providers by $56 million. That's a lot. That seems like it would be a boon for you guys to be able to save that amount of money on health care costs. Well, that's true, and, and that's why the House version didn't go further enough, further enough in my, my opinion. And if it was up for a vote today, I would vote the same way. And I'm encouraged by these numbers. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have to do what's best for our district, what's best for Ohio, and best for America on this vote. Um, I want to ask you about what your fellow Ohio Congressman Dennis Kucinich ultimately decided. He was a no. He announced yesterday that he is going to go ahead and support this bill. It may not be his favorite, he says, but what he wants to do is move forward in the process so that there are other issues that he can focus on, specifically job creation. And he says that, you know, he's, he, it's not going to be my way or the highway. He's not thrilled, but he's going to say yes for the greater good. How much of a consideration is that for you? No, that, that is the consideration. We're faced with passing an in, imperfect doing nothing. There's a cost of doing both. There's a cost of doing nothing, and there's a cost with doing something in terms of moving this bill forward. And that's what we're faced with. But at the end of the day, uh, we need to end the most abusive practice of the insurance industry, dropping uh, patients because they get sick or ill or denying them coverage because they have a pre-existing condition. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what this debate should be framed around. Uh, you know, in, in all of these districts, as we say, politics is local, and you're uh, up against it because uh, there are people that are thinking about trying to run it, uh, they're running ads. Uh, based on whether or not you vote yes on this bill, and it's going to be what the GOP competitors in your district are going to, you know, seize upon. How much of this, how much of a concern do you have to factor in wanting to continue as a congressman representing your district? Well, uh, I care less about what's done in the, in the elections. Uh, we'll have to stand on our record and defend our votes. At the end of the day, I want to do what's right for America, what's right for Ohio. And, you know, there's a lot of attention being put on our district. This is one of the, you know, of course, more moderate districts in the country. So we want to make sure that we make a good decision for our, our constituents. If it comes out today, the CBO numbers, and say this is deficit neutral, are you a yes? Well, I'm moving in, I'm moving at uh, looking those looking at those numbers very closely and moving in a direction of making a decision here very shortly. All right. Well, Congressman Bocherry, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Karen. Coming up now on uh, 17 minutes after the hour, and like a squirrel hiding its nuts, Acorn offices are vanishing across the country. Our CNN special investigation looks at.